Harris is the Director of Business Development at Viridian, and she was also the first employee in 2011. She lives in a floating home in, on the Columbia River in Oregon in her, with her husband and her rescue dog. I'm so jealous. Chris, I have two now, Amy. I now have two. I sent you that before I, we adopted oh, the other yeah, one yeah. just she the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. She has two dogs now. <laughs> Did you adopt the other one? I didn't tell you yet. Sorry, I forgot. Foster fail, very first foster fail. <laughs> <laughs> She's a huge animal lover, obviously, and she fosters dogs whenever she can, and she enjoys traveling, fishing, and wine, and Kristen is a girl after my own heart. I also <laughs> foster kittens, so we have that in common. Mm -hmm. I also want to introduce Dan Roberts. He's the VP of sales at MG Blair, and he calls Cincinnati home. Uh, he has uh, lives with his wife and his two furry friends, a rescue collie and a rescue cat. And he's a big fan of stand-up co comedy and loves hiking as, whenever he can. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. I'm going to um, switch over my share to you, and I'm going to let you start us off, Dan, so give me just a second. All right, I think I just did it. All right, let's see how it works here. It went smooth yesterday. Hopefully we can get that to happen for us again. I know. Let's see. Can everybody see me there? Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this really short and sweet. Just give you the basics uh, so that we have more time for your questions at the end. Uh, so we are MG Blair. Uh, we are an outdoor furniture company. We started uh, in the industry about two years ago, 18 months ago. Uh, so we're really getting our legs under us and kind of figuring out how to get the ball rolling here. Um, so what are we? Um, well, of course, it's not going to. There we go. Uh, so MG Blair. So we have five lines of furniture. We're broken into uh, the Agave line, the Core line, Haven line, Slim, and Atoll. Uh, so each one has a little bit of a unique story behind it as to how we've come across it. Uh, I'll touch on that briefly and kind of just give you the highlights of each one. So we'll get right into it here. The Core line. Uh, so we call it core because this is the core of the design. So this is what's going to hold the outdoor area together. Uh, this is going to be your side chairs, your arm chairs, uh, loungers, uh, tables, end tables, coffee tables, uh, dining tables, everything along those lines. Uh, so probably not going to be the wow piece that, uh, that I'll get into in just a second, but uh, it's going to be what keeps the design cohesive across the whole out outdoor area. Uh, a few highlights here. Uh, all of our product, all of our wood products are natural fiber products across all of our lines are FSC certified. Uh, so we are renewable and sustainable on all of our wood products. Um, we primarily are going to use the Sumbrella collections. Uh, we, we focus on the elements collection as our, as our highlight, uh, but we can do COM uh, or custom orders uh, without any real issues. We have access to most everything. Uh, our preference for sling is going to be with Serge Ferrari. Uh, we've just found in our own testing uh, and industry testing that there's a little more resiliency there than the others. Uh, so we really try to focus there so we can make sure we get um, all of our color fastness and our spring back is the big thing with our, especially with loungers. Um, so the core and Haven lines are both going to be manufactured in Thailand. Uh, our manufacturing partner there has been doing commercial grade products for about 45 years now. So we're getting into a multi-generational business and you'll see that theme across to every one of our partners. Um, so we'll move along here to the Haven line. So the Haven line again, uh, complements the core. Uh, this is gonna be the wow piece. Uh, I try to sell this to everybody as uh, this is our Instagram photo. Uh, so we all know that everybody, especially our younger travelers are coming in and they're really looking for that social media photo that's gonna set off their trip. Uh, these are going to be the big, opulent wow pieces. Uh, everything's going to be plush and comfortable. Uh, everything in this line is fully customizable. So if, uh, if you see the frame of something that you like and you want to change something to it, we can usually uh, get that done for you in a relatively quickly time frame. Um, here, you're going to see more wicker products. Uh, so in our wicker, we're going to 
utilize Vero wicker. Uh, Vero is a uh, dyed all the way through uh, HDPE wicker that uh, has won several awards in the Middle East for its color fastness. Uh, so that's why we choose to use that. It's gone through the most extreme UV issues that we could put it through and it's uh, come out the other end uh, as an award winner every time. Uh, Haven Line again is manufactured in Thailand with our manufacturing partner that's been doing so for about 45 years in the commercial world. Uh, so there really it's just about you bringing our, your design to us and we are going to put it on to, uh, we're going to take it from paper and make it reality. Scoot over here to the Slimline. Uh, so Slimline is our in-house knockdown line. Uh, so we own a patent on this product. Uh, our patent comes in, uh, I'm going to try to get fancy here with the laser pointer. So if you see here, uh, the, the ratchet strap sitting next to uh, the pieces, we start to break it down. So those are going to be what holds it together. So we utilize an old, uh, an old method of production called peg and housing system. Uh, it makes this furniture extremely durable and tough, uh, but it's great because we can go from the picture you see in the top left-hand corner to the picture in the bottom right-hand corner uh, in less than a minute. Uh, so it, it takes up about 30% of the footprint of the chair uh, when it's knocked down. So it's great for an area. It's a niche product that's going to go for areas that are going to be multi-use. Um, but uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming here. We've done a, a slight redesign, so we're really excited to kind of start launching this back out. And you'll get more information via Amy on this as we kind of launch this out into the world. Our ATOL line is going to be uh, primarily out of Indonesia and India. So this is going to be all natural fibers. So we're going to be utilizing eucalyptus and teak, as well as some mango and some jungle vine. Uh, what makes this one really unique and what I love to kind of highlight here is that uh, the set you see in the top center and the bottom center of your screen. So this is a jungle vine that is actually pulled from the jungle by a local village. It's then soaked in a volcanic mud pool, mud pool for two weeks. Uh, that is a natural uh, way that we can sterilize the product. So there are no chemical treatments on any of this. Uh, and then that also makes it, uh, turns it into a wet spaghetti noodle. So it, uh, the vine goes from a really hard wood to a really soft, malleable piece. Uh, we take a mahogany frame that's pre-built, goes into the mud with the vine. Uh, we build the couch or the chair or the table around the mahogany frame. It comes out of the volcanic mud pools, it gets rinsed off, and then it's heat cured in the sun for typically between 15 and 30 days. Uh, makes it a very tough product. Uh, this is one of our toughest products overall, uh, most resilient. Uh, and then of course, in addition to that, we have the regular sets your acacias and things like that that are gonna come along with this line. Uh, move on to our last line here is the agave line. This is kind of my favorite line because it's so colorful, bright, and it's unique. Uh, so we actually partnered with uh, the third generation uh, out of Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, the owner. His grandfather was uh, one of the original Acapulco chair designers. So that's the, the chair in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm sure most of you already know that. Uh, but this is really a loud, fun, colorful set-off piece. This is really great. We've had a lot of uh, inquiry from rooftop bars, uh, smaller restaurants that, that really like this because even in smaller orders, there is a there is a way to set off and, and just highlight the colors. Um, let's see here. I uh, I want to make sure I get through my my bullet point there. Yes. So Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, so we moved from Acapulco in the uh, 50s when it was invented. They moved into Guadalajara, Mexico in the late 60s, and they've been there as a family-owned business since then. So that is uh, the quick down and dirty. I just wanted to get you guys, uh, there's a lot of information there to cover and I don't want to take too much time. So I hope that uh, sort of touched on everything that everyone was looking for. And hopefully in the Q&A, uh, I can kind of get to some of your other questions. So I'm going to do my best here to stop sharing and see if I can transfer that back over to you, Amy. Thanks, Dan. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs> yeah, the um, lines are beautiful and they are really mm -hmm. exciting. And for anyone that wants to see the um, agave line, which was the one with the ropes, I have some samples that I can bring to your office and show them to you. That's great. I'm going to, let's see.
There we go. Go in and give it to Kristen. All right. Hello, everyone. I'll wait for it to transfer over to me here, and then um, we'll be able to share my screen. There we go. So um, I am Kristen with Viridian Wood. Let me make sure this is the right one here that's sharing with you. Um, can you all see my laser pointer there? <laughs> Hopefully, okay, good. Um, so I have three monitors going here, so it uh, it kind of messes with me every time. So um, we are, I'm with Viridian Wood in Portland, Oregon. Um, we are a sustainable wood company. We do a lot of reclaimed, but we also do um, a lot of sustainable non-reclaimed woods as well. The majority of which are reclaimed here out of the Pacific Northwest, um, but we also have some sources from other areas. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a brief survey of our different product lines and kind of go through the history of some of our products. By the way, that Atoll line, Dan, is pretty flippin' awesome. I wanna, I wanna ask you more about that, that was so cool. Um, you're gonna see some interesting uh, woods from um, uh, Asia in my presentation as well. So. Why, oh, there we go. So, um, so this is our flagship product, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at the monitor, monitor in front of me and not at you during this, but um, so our uh, Jakarta is the product that got this company started back in 2015. Um, and it is literally a mix of about 30 different species of tropical hardwoods that were used to stack in between these large wraps of railroad track that the US was importing from Asia mostly Japan and Korea. So you can see these, these stamps on here are heat stamps. They're showing that the wood was heat treated at the source in Asia before they were put on the ships. And it's all dimensional lumber. This is two by three by six and a half foot pieces, all different tropical woods. And the whole point of this is these, the, the steel would get loaded onto ships. They come to our port in, on the Columbia River here in Portland. And the steel, they're 100% a one-time use. It's considered dunnage or cribbing. And once they offload the steel off the ships, all the wood would go into dumpsters and get hauled off to the landfill and um, just be gone. It was a one-time use. And so in uh, 2005 um, is when the founders of the company, Joe and Pierce, discovered this immense amount of wood waste. And this was the product that they found first and decided they had to do something with it. Um, just another note, uh, even though this is not domestic wood, it is FSC certified reclaimed post-industrial, and that is because our chain of custody started at our port in Portland, Oregon. Um, it otherwise would have gone into the waste stream, so we're able to achieve that FSC certification. So we've got some really unique looks that aren't necessarily old, but they're very interesting looking, very sustainable, um, and uh, hopefully they stop using this material for this use, but if they're gonna continue to use it, we're gonna continue to reclaim it. So here's an image of the paneling. This is our Jakarta Rustic. It's literally, we just plane off the skins of those boards. This is all just patina from it being on the ships for months at a time coming over from Asia. And you can see these perpendicular oxidation marks. That's from it sitting on that railroad track for however long it took to get over here. Um, we make wall paneling and tabletops out of this. This is going to be your super bulletproof heavy duty table. Um, the other thing that we like to say about this product is that this is not the one you want if you're looking for 100% consistency flat color. This is literally a mix of about 30 different species of tropical hardwoods. Um, and so it, what you see is what you get. We can tell you that it's going to be consistently inconsistent. So you can count on the inconsistency, uh, but it's got a lot of variation and that's part of the appeal. Um, once you get under the surface of those boards, so this is the rustic patina just on the surface, just under the surface is what we call our, uh, it's our Jakarta smooth. So this really, you can see all the different species and it's a really beautiful, very different look. Um, this is a really neat install. We did at an architecture firm in um, Michigan. So we don't do tabletops out of this, just wall paneling. Um, just gonna keep rolling because we have got kind of tight time here. So our Northwind is the other product that we reclaim from the port. And this is some really great imagery giving you uh, a visual of what we're dealing with. So this is a big ship that came into our port. These are all the dumpsters that were offloaded. Um, just to give you a general idea of scale. And so as a reminder, this is just coming in on steel commodities. It's not all of the ships coming into our port. Um, but on average, one ship would result in about 30 30-yard 30 dumpsters of waste, wood waste. 
Um, and the majority of it is wood. There's also uh, nylon and metal cable commingled, but most of it is wood. And we reused or recycled 99% of that. This is another great image of the hold of the ship. So it's kind of hard to understand the scale here because this is a massive, you know, it's like a three-story building deep. Um, so, and these are really, these are the slabs. This material comes in from Russia. It's um, steel slab material. And this is just a really great image of the, that's exactly what the wood is used for. It's just stacked in between those slabs. So they can get forks underneath and remove them from the ship. Um, and then here's the finished product. So this is all the steel that got offloaded. This is Joe, one of the founders and our CEO. And then just this immense amount of wood waste that you can see here. So the Northwind is actually a really beautiful product we've been getting since day one of the company. Hasn't really been super popular until very recently. So I'm sure as a lot of you have noticed, the kind of rustic, really heavy textured looks are starting to um, fade in popularity. There's always a place for them, but this is a really great way to have a more smooth, refined look. Um, it's a spruce and pine mix, um, but it's still reclaimed. Same thing, FSC certified reclaimed. Um, this is a laser etch uh, that we did on um, on this project, so that can be that's something that we can do. All of our products are sold as a plank, tongue and groove, or we can do custom profiles. Uh, this is our whitewash. It just gives it a little bit more of a of a neutral color, um, where we just do a whitewash. But there's still quite a bit of variation because. This was dimensional lumber. We didn't cut, you know, it wasn't cut in, uh, in terms of being flooring or paneling. And then just another image of that, we can do all kinds of different um, patterns. Um, moving right along, another source. So those are our sources that we get from the port. That's kind of the beginning of the company. And then as we've expanded our sourcing, we always look for things that we can get really deep inventories of. At one point in time, we were getting six ships a month of all that wood waste from the port. So you can count on this material still being there. You can spec it now, and then you can spec it in two years, and you can it's going to be a consistent material spec. Um, our granary plank is actually reclaimed from grain silos in eastern Washington state. It was all dimensional two by six lumber um, that was the floors, and all those are being retrofitted with steel and, and new technology. So we've got a virtual endless supply of this material. Um, it is. Uh, Douglas fir and ponderosa pine, which is literally what was in the, the area of eastern Washington state when they built the grain silos. So it's that domestic material. It's got a lot of really beautiful nail uh, hole character and hammer marks. Um, this is a really beautiful install we did in um, Miami where we just provided the tongue and group paneling to the mill worker and they built this amazing trellis out of it. Um, and then this product can be customized with paint. So uh, we like to call this color burst. Our, this is a standard color of ours, which is blue. We're adding the paint after the fact, so it can be customized to whatever col paint color you would like. Um, lots, all those nail holes and knots and hammer marks find the, are a lot of places for paint to fall into, and then we just plane it um, at one point, which kind of takes off most of the paint, but leaves a little behind. Obviously, I'm a dog lover. That's my buddy Vinny. Everybody likes this picture, um, but just another image of the of the uh, a custom color option that you can do. And then continuing, I'm going to move a little fast here because I'm running out of time. Continuing with the Douglas fir, uh, we also do uh, beams from reclaimed uh, reclaimed from warehouses and building deconstruction in various different dimensions. We do tabletops out of this. It's a really great option for um, having a rustic top rustic looking top but with a completely smooth surface so you've got knots and nail holes um, but a very smooth surface we do uh, a, a commercial uh, let me go back here uh, our finish on our tabletops and on our paneling is commercially viable very durable bleach cleanable wipeable um, and holds up to all common cleaners mm -hmm. um, and then with the beams we also do stair treads so just a kind of a quick little, it's one of the few options that we can do in our in, in open treads. Antique barn wood, this one will interest you all a little bit more than probably the rest because this is coming out of your region of the country. Um, it is, we work with a partner out there. It's the only product that we don't reclaim out of the Pacific Northwest. We mostly do really beautiful floors with this. So it's, there, it's a partner that's taking down barns, um, you know, mostly in Tennessee and the Carolinas and, and that kind of region. And uh, we can do this in a herringbone pattern. This is a beautiful install called Multnomah Whiskey Library here in Portland. If you ever make it out here, you gotta go to this place. Um, just another kind of image of that. We also do um, tabletops out of this material and a couple different options, which is very popular. 
Um, moving along to our, our good neighbors. So this is our backyard fence board. Literally comes out of Northern California. It's that quintessential kind of rustic look that everybody's used to seeing. Um, usually specified unfinished can also be applied to an exterior application, which has been a really popular use for this product. Um, and we also, in going with the trends, we do have a, a smooth version of this where we just plane off that rustic patina and it's a beautiful redwood option. And then here, we don't have any installs of this yet, but this is actually a reactive finish. So we apply an oil and vinegar, or I'm sorry, I always do that, iron and vinegar solution, which is we soak steel wool in vinegar. It's an age-old woodworker's technique. And then when you apply it to certain species of wood, it changes the color of the wood because it reacts with the tannic acid in it. So with redwood, it turns it black and gives it this really contemporary charred look. Um, brand new products, so we don't even have any installs of it. Um, Amy could show you samples of that if, if you're interested. Um, and then moving on quickly to the sustainable non-reclaimed options that we offer. So we've got some character grade American white oak that we do in a natural tone um, that's really beautiful. We like to include the knots and some of the imperfections because that's really in line with our style. And then this is another reactive finish option. So it's again, that iron and vinegar solution when applied to white oak, it turns into this beautiful, rich kind of gray brown instead of the um, black that it turns the redwood. So it's just a really interesting kind of different, unique finish. Um, we also do walnuts and we do this in a live edge. It's a hand carved edge. So it's not a true slab, which means it's affordable and customizable. Um, again, with our, our super durable commercial grade finish. Uh, we can do just the standard walnut as well. There's going to be some sapwood sometimes in this product because we do select the character grade because we like all of the interesting grain patterns. Um, we can also integrate power in this product as well. And then really quick, lastly, um, I'm running long, but we do have this new design ply product, which is um, a, a sustainable uh, apple ply that we're doing a veneer on. This is kind of in response to obviously budgets are changing right now in the new COVID environment. This is a much more affordable option. This walnut veneer top is uh, half the price of, this, the, of the solid uh, top as well. And then we've got, um, we're doing like a, a laminate top on that too. We also have bases, I don't have time to get into that. You can find all that information on our website and Amy can give you more info on that. But. Um, Thank you very much for, sorry for talking so fast. Let me stop sharing here and uh, give the power back over to Amy. One second. Man, talk about doing great on time. We're right on schedule. <laughs> Good, yeah, I've been trying to keep an eye on that because I can go long. Okay, Amy, I'm passing it over to you now. Thank you. So we basically very quickly kind of gave you guys a bird's eye view of everything. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me later. I'll be happy to respond. Um, I didn't see anything in the chat box, but I did want to ask both of you guys. And Dan, I have two questions for you. Um, I wanted to know about if there is a minimum um for ordering and also because these are kind of questions that i get asked a lot and um dan if you'll share about the um new pilot program that you were telling me about sure absolutely uh so so typically um we are looking for a 20-foot container uh so middle to a larger size property is, is where we're going to look at um but uh, what Amy was talking about there is, so we're introducing a pilot program. So what we're going to do is for the smaller orders, uh, we are going to start opening up a container. So, so basically I have a container that is open currently. It'll be open through the entire month of July. So if we have a, a small project, say that needs just a table and four chairs or a couple of loungers, something like that, that, that wouldn't typically be something that you could look to a foreign manufacturer to, to, to gather uh, in a cost effective way. We're going to open that container up. It's going to shoot our lead times out a little bit. So we're probably going to be looking more at the 14 to 16 weeks, um, just depending on how quick we uh, fill that container up. Um, but it's going to allow us to kind of open up those doors and see what we can do. And, and the game plan here, uh, full disclosure, we're a very open company about it. My, my game plan here is to be able to open a container up for small orders every 30 days. Uh, so we can then continue to fill that for smaller orders that allows us to uh, to maybe offer some really great options if you have anybody that's doing um, 
uh, you know, smaller residential interior design, stuff like that. If you get a project like that, that, that uh, especially on the higher end, we get a lot of inquiries about, uh, you know, people are willing to pay the good money for, for a better product. And so they're saying, I, I need a commercial grade product into my home, uh, but it's tough with lead times that can really that can really back you up. So we're hoping that we can try to, to pilot this program and see what we can do to offer more options. That's really the goal here. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Kristen, can you share about um, if there's a minimum to order? Yeah, so, and I'll talk about lead times too, because I didn't touch on that in my presentation. Um, so we we typically have a $2,000 minimum. Um, that being said, we don't always enforce that when we're talking about specifications. So, um, but most of our, especially if you're talking about tables or our paneling, most of the projects fit into that. Um, it's just when we're talking about a tiny little coffee table for a lobby or something that doesn't really make sense for us. We need to have a little bit larger order when we work on a really big scale. Um, our lead times also uh, two weeks or less on our wall paneling and flooring options and four weeks or less on our tables. And then if it's shipping to the East Coast, because we're all of our manufacturing happens here in Portland, um, the majority of it, I should say, there's a little tiny bit that happens um, like with the barnwood out by you guys. But um, it, it'll just take another week in transit. So five weeks delivered on tables, three weeks delivered on paneling and flooring. You guys have the most incredible lead times. Amazing. It helps. I mean, it helps that we do it in house and it's something that we've learned. It's, you know, that you got to stand out <laughs> in certain ways in this industry. Yeah. And for us, we're, it's always a push for us. So. And that's, that's another thing um, is everything's USA made. So. Yep. Yeah, and we've been, we're still open. We've been, we've been running this whole time. Lumber products are considered essential, thankfully. So we've been allowed to remain operational and we have been busy again. I just in the last couple of weeks, it's been turning back on, I think, which is fantastic. So, um, so yeah, our lead times are steady. We aren't affected by the co any of the COVID stuff. So um, if you need anything right away, we're here for you. Call me. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Call Amy. <laughs> All right. So that's, it's 1.30. How about that? So Perfect. if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. And thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Amy. Bye. Great. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.